1969, a drum solo that would shape the history of electronic music was born. The percussive loop that lasted 5.2 seconds has been sampled more than 2,000 times. Drummed by the late Gregory C. Coleman, it featured on the Amen Brother, the B-side to the funk and soul group, the Winston single, Colour Him Father. While the A-side received a Grammy Award for Best R&B Song in 1970, Amen Brother was largely overlooked, until the mid-80s, where its cultural legacy took off. In 1986, a version of the Amen Brother was included in the Ultimate Breaks and Beats bootleg series on Street Beat Records. The original version of the Amen Brother was at a speed of 45 RPM. In this compilation, the Amen Break appears at 33. In the same year, the EMU SP1200 sampler was released, meaning the birth of sampling was born. The Amen Break had a huge influence on music. Let's start with hip hop. Salt and Pepper, one of the first hip hop groups to use the sample. In 1986, their track I Desire features the Amen Break. Soon, a wealth of hip hop artists followed suit. Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock, Tough Crew and Success in Effect all had used the sample by the late 80s. The Amen Break is a smooth backbone to the title track of NWA's beloved debut album. Let the bass kick. And across the pond, the break's influence started to take over the UK. By the late 80s, early 90s, British rave music was in full force. UK producers started to take note of the Amen Break's potential by playing with the tempo and speeding it up. One of the first people to play with this was Carl Cox. He combined the sampling of hip-hop group Success and Effect and house producer Landlord to create his 1990 white label release, Let the Bass Kick. This is one of the earliest forms of hardcore to feature the aim and break. The blurring of the sounds continued in 1991 with the release of the influential genre-bending track We Are A.E. This track by Lenny D. Ice merges the aim and break with gunshots, embedded reloads and reggae-style bassline. It's attributed as one of the first proto-jungle tracks that laid the foundation for the birth of the jungle sound. Amazingly, Lenny D. Ice made this track in 1988, three years before its release. In 1992, the Amen break became increasingly prominent in tracks with darker moods and darker melodies. Tracks like The Body Snatchers, You Funny, Just For You London, and Noise Factory's Set Me Free were all a part of the birth of jungle. Artists like Four Hero under their Tom and Jerry alias, Omnitrino and Foul Play began embracing the sound. Jungle took over the sound waves in the UK and began to enter the mainstream charts. Tracks like Original Nutter by UK Apache, Ushay FX and MB featuring General Levy, Incredible, entered the top 40 charts in 1994. Jungle's use of the Amen break then catalyzed the birth of drum and bass. Producers moved away from the ragged influence and into more refined and calmer sounds with heavily edited drum programming. The Invisible Man's 1993 single, The Beginning, is one of the first tracks to be explicitly labelled as drum and bass. By the mid-90s, the sound became less raw and more reflective of the arm and break's soulful and jazzy origins. With producers like Ronnie Size, LTJ Bookham and Fotec, these were countless artists playing with the sound of the Amen break. IDM producers such as Square Pusher heavily manipulated the Amen break, turning it into something completely different. This is shown in his track Vic Acid, released in 1997. Another IDM producer, Luke Vibert, had many aliases. One of them was Amen Andrews. This was a project defined by his recurrent use of the Amen Break. Being one of the most versatile samples, the Amen Break can now be heard just about anywhere. From the dark alternative hip-hop of Tyler the Creator's Pig to the skewed lo-fi house of DJ Seinfeld's Wombat Bounce, the Amen Break is the most used sample in modern day music. But what did the Winstons think about this? 
Considering they made this so long ago, how did they feel about their contribution to the world? Tragically, Gregory C. Coleman died homeless and broke in 2006. He never received royalties for his legendary drumming and the use of the Amen Break sample. Richard L. Spencer, the lead vocalist of the Winstons and the copyright holder of the Amen Brother, told the BBC it felt like plagiarism and I felt ripped off. In the same year, a crowdfund campaign was launched by British DJ Martin Webster to get Spencer paid for his role in the creation of the Amen Break. More than 2,000 people donated and Spencer was awarded $24,000. In 2017, Spencer and the Winstons were inducted into the North Carolina Music Hall of Fame. And a second GoFundMe page has been set up to reimburse the Winstons for the amazing contribution they've had on music. So that's it. That is the amazing story about the Winstons' Amen Brother and the amazing sample, the Amen Break.